Here are the top stories for today, October 28, 2020. The DOTR extends the implementation of mandatory cashless toll transactions. OFWs are not required to avail of private RT-PCR tests at the NAIA. Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade Jr. clarifies he is only warning Liza Soberano as if she was his younger sister. And Ilocos Norte turns its coffee room into a contact tracing hub. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Department of Transportation, or DOTR, has decided to push the start of the mandatory implementation of cashless toll collections on toll roads from November 2nd to December 1. The department said this is in response to the clamor of motorists who have yet to attach RFID stickers on their vehicles. Toll Regulatory Board Executive Director Abraham Sales said this will be the last time they will be extending. The DOTR earlier ordered the full implementation of cashless toll collections at the expressways and major toll roads in line with the government's thrust to contain the spread of COVID-19. It also aims to avoid traffic congestion in toll plazas. DOTR Assistant Secretary for Road Transport and Infrastructure Mark Steven Pastor reminded motorists to make use of the extended deadline to have RFIDs installed in their vehicles as early as they can. President Rodrigo Duterte has given Budget Secretary Wendel Abisado the power to approve the release of the funds under the Bayanihan to Recover as One or Bayanihan II. Following reports of backlogs, the said fund releases no longer need to go through the office of the executive secretary. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said that under the new policy, DBM has already approved the release of 56.9 billion pesos in Bayanihan 2 funds. Mabuti pong ginawa ni Presidente. Binigyan niya po ng delegated authority si, D si DBM Secretary Avisado para mag-approve na ng release. Alinsunod po dito, meron pong uh, pitong departamento na marilisa ng pondo ngayon. Ito po ang DTI, 100 million for shared service facilities um, para sa Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa Program. Ang NDRRMF, 5 billion. Ang DOLE, 8 billion para sa Adjustment Measures Program and Tulong Panghanap Buhay para sa ating displaced and disadvantaged workers. DSWD, 6 billion. Department of Agriculture, 11.632 billion. DOH, 20.575 billion. DOLE, 5.1 billion para po sa ACAP. At nag-release na rin po ng 500 million para sa funding requirements under the Local Government Support Fund. The House of Representatives is fully supportive of President Rodrigo Duterte's directive for the conduct of a large-scale investigation into allegations of corruption in the entire government. In a statement, House Speaker Lord Alan Velasco said they fully understand that the President is doing this out of his frustration and the House leadership is one with him in his desire to rid the bureaucracy of corrupt officials and employees in the remainder of his term. Velasco said the president issued the directive following incessant attacks against the House because of the alleged involvement of some of its members in corruption activities in the DPWH. President Duterte ordered the DOJ to prosecute and file appropriate charges against those involved in anomalies. The directive would be in effect until June 30, 2022, unless sooner lifted or revoked. Meanwhile, two House committees formally recommended the filing of criminal charges against Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, former PhilHealth President Ricardo Morales, and other PhilHealth officials who were allegedly involved in irregularities within the state insurance firm. The House Committees on Public Accounts and on Good Government and Public Accountability recommended the filing of charges against them for violation of Section 3 of the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act and Article 22 of the Revised Penal Code on Alleged Illegal Use of Public Funds. This is in connection with the anomalous implementation of the Interim Reimbursement Mechanism or IRM. 
According to the report, while the idea behind the IRM may be commendable, the mechanism itself is flawed and encourages large-scale corruption and collusion between PhilHealth officials and health care institutions. Despite having unclear legal basis, some 15 billion pesos of funds have been distributed by PhilHealth to various healthcare institutions all over the country. The committee said PhilHealth needs to be overhauled to respond to the health needs of the Filipinos, particularly those belonging in the marginalized sectors. The One Stop Shop or OSS at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport denied allegations that returning overseas Filipino workers were forced to avail of expensive private reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction or RT-PCR tests. DOTR Office of Transportation Security Administrator Raul Del Rosario said the tests administered to the returning OFWs are paid for by the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration or OWA. However, he said some do avail of private testing for faster release of results. Philippine Red Cross Chairman and Senator Richard Gordon earlier alleged that a non-government organization has been allowed to administer RT-PCR testing at NAIA for as much as 20,000 pesos per test, which is a far cry from the PRC's 3,500 pesos. According to the OSS, private laboratories at the NAIA are charging 4,000 pesos per swab test. The OSS encouraged those who experience being forced to take expensive private COVID-19 tests to report the matter to their department. The Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, or PhilHealth, released 500 million pesos as partial payment to the Philippine Red Cross. According to PhilHealth President and CEO Dante Guerran, the state insurer will expedite processing of the remaining balance in line with strict compliance with the rules and regulations set by the Commission on Audit. Geran also assured the accredited laboratories that PhilHealth will expedite the processing of its payments upon submission of complete documentary requirements. Malacanang defended the Department of Education for purchasing over 100 service vehicles worth 1.5 million pesos each. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the vehicles were already budgeted in the 2019 General Appropriations Act and the purchase was a result of the public bidding process. Kilang kilangan po talaga ng DepEd yan dahil nga po kinakilangan i-deliver ang mga modules sa mga malalayong lugar all over the Philippines. So, bakit po yan ang brand? Eh, yan po yung nanalo sa bidding. Eh, talaga naman pong lahat ng government procurement, dumadaan po yan sa public bidding. At yan po yung pinakamababang responsive bid na nakuha ng DepEd. Alam nyo, Vance, ultimately, it's a matter of trusting the head of office. I trust, the president trusts, and the entire Filipino nation trusts Professor Emeritus um, Yonor Briones. Meanwhile, DepEd is set to receive gadgets from the Bureau of Customs or BOC. The BOC port of Naia identified the items from their seized and abandoned things. Several devices and items for donation include flash drives, hard drives, mobile phones, full HD LED computer monitors, printers, laptops, routers, pocket Wi-Fi, and computer tablets. Aside from gadgets, the BOC would also donate educational books, school bags, and shoes. Last week, the Port of Clark donated over 5,000 electronic devices such as laptops and cell phones to the Department of Education. Still to come, investigation is underway on the maltreatment case of Philippine Ambassador to Brazil, Marichu Mauro. And the Hungarian government supports the continuation of Philippines' EU free trade agreement talks. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Alamin kung paano ang tamang pagsusuot ng surgical mask. Una, hawakan ng mask sa strap at siguruhin natatakpan nito ang inyong bibig at ilong. Tandaan, ang may kulay na bahagi ng mask ang dapat nasa labas. Ito lamang ang tamang paraan ng pagsuot nito. Ihulma ang nose piece o maliit na metallic strip ayon sa hugis ng inyong ilong. Iwasan ang paghawak sa inyong ilong at bibig. Kung marumi na ang mask, hubarin nito gamit ang strap. 
at itapon ito sa isang basurahan. Siguruhin ang maayos na paghuhugas ng kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. Ang surgical mask ay dapat gamitin ng mga pasyenteng may sakit sa baga o mga taong mayroong ubo, sipon at lagnat, mga nag-aalaga sa mga may sakit, at mga healthcare at frontline workers. Maaari ring magsuot nito kung kayo ay pupunta sa matataong lugar. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. Investigation involving Philippine Ambassador to Brazil Marichu Mauro is underway. Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr. recalled Ambassador Mauro after a Brazilian TV released a video that showed her assaulting her Filipina helper on at least four occasions. The video was allegedly taken by CCTV cameras inside the Ambassador's residence in Brasilia. In a statement released today, Loxin reiterates that the DFA is giving this matter its utmost attention. He said all diplomats are held to an even higher standard by virtue of their profession's mandate. He said that under his leadership, the DFA will not tolerate in any way the actions of its ranking officers or staff that go against their mandate of protecting all Filipinos abroad. The helper left Brazil on October 21 and is back in the Philippines. Meanwhile, Mauro was recalled on Monday to explain the maltreatment of her service staff. The government vows that the Philippines would concede nothing when it comes to its territorial claims in the South China Sea. Foreign Affairs Secretary Chodoro Luxin Jr. reiterated that they will allow no infection to go unanswered. At the same time, they would try to see if we can also cooperate on other fields. He added that the Philippines had lodged a multitude of diplomatic protests against every incursion that China has made. Loxin said Manila is resolved to protect every inch of its sovereignty and sovereign rights in the West Philippine Sea under international law and as clarified and affirmed by the 2016 Arbitral Award. At the UN, President Rodrigo Duterte himself underscored that the landmark ruling, which invalidated China's massive Nine Dash claims in the South China Sea. He said Manila continues to apply a dual-track approach in dealing with China by separating talks on territorial disputes and economic development. The Commission on Elections estimated around 62 to 63 million registered voters for the 2022 national elections. Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez said the number includes potential new registrants and voters whose registration was activated. He also reported that from a voting population of 61 million in 2019, they have deactivated nearly 3 million voters for failing to vote for two consecutive elections, leaving only around 59 million registered voters. In the 2019 polls, the voter turnout is at 75.9% or roughly 46 to 47 million voters. Applications for voters' registration may be submitted to all offices of the election officer from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mondays to Fridays. Registration remains suspended in critical areas that may be under localized enhanced community quarantine. Some 1.2 million poor households in Davao region will be enrolled in the Philippine Identification System or PhilSIS. Philippine Statistics Authority Region 11 Officer in Charge Pepito Amoyan said, Originally, some 660,000 households were identified by the agency based on the DSWD Listahan 3. The new head count includes the head of the households plus one adult member of the family for the registration. On November 25, the agency will conduct the actual registration, during which the validated information from the pre-registration will be processed. 
Amoyan said PSA Region 11 has completed at least 12% out of the targeted number and that they are hoping we could finish it in 2022 before the president finishes his term. Republic Act No. 11055, otherwise known as the Philippine Identification System Act, aims to establish a single national identification system for all citizens and resident aliens of the Philippines. Port workers in Agusan del Norte are now able to return to work with better pay as ports and vessels resume operations amid the pandemic. Jennifer Peña Gaitano has the story. Through the modernization program implemented in Maso Port of Butuan City, the port workers are able to continue their livelihood and gain income amid the COVID-19 pandemic that greatly affects the country and people in different ways. According to Alfredo Paler, supervisor of Concord Arastre Estividor Corporation, more than 40 workers in Masa Port have received higher pay and income during this pandemic as there have been several vessels which continue to arrive and dock at the Masa Port. Bisag na pandemic, pagbada yun gaya po ng pag-abot sa mga barako. Pero man din, gaya po ng pag-atag sa mga trabaho. The Maso Port has brought a huge contribution to the revenue of the PPA Sport Management Office Agusan as the operation of cargo vessels in a Sipit port also continues amid the pandemic. This year, 2020, we expect Maso to contribute 2%, mga, that's around mga 2.4 million sa coffers na PMO Agusan. An average of 15 cargo vessels have been recorded every month at the Maso Port and all of them abide by strict protocols. We used to have Lal moments ba dito sa Masao, there are times na wala talagang barko. But now, we have noticed that uh, every week, we have a minimum of four to six vessels. Meanwhile, the enhancement of the passenger's terminal building in a seabit port goes on. And the utilization of the PPA's contact tracing app will soon be in place, as well as the passenger's e-ticketing services. A PPA has adapted this contact tracing up all that will come into the port the clients the passengers they will be using this app for the PNA newsroom i am Jennifer Peña Gaitano of the Philippine Information Agency Caraga in our business news, the Hungarian government has assured the Philippines of support to continue negotiations for a free trade deal between the Philippines and the European Union. Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade of Hungary Peter Zizarto led a high-level bilateral meeting last October 15, the first for the DTI chief amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Zizarto supports the continuation of Philippines' EU free trade agreement talks to create better opportunities and a liberalized business environment for Hungarian firms. The discussions include strengthening trade and investments in manufacturing, water treatment and management, agriculture and food economy, food safety, health and transportation. DTI Undersecretary Seferino Rodolfo said the Philippines aims to tap Hungarian technology for water treatment and management to rehabilitate key bodies of water like the Laguna de Bay. The trade officials were also looking into enhancing cooperation in COVID-19 response. Up next, Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade Jr. clarified he is only warning Liza Soberano as if she was his younger sister. And Ilocos Norte turns its coffee room into contact tracing hub. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. 
o galiin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Southern Luzon Command Chief Antonio Parlade Jr. clarified anew that he was not red-tagging actress Liza Soberano, but was giving her a warning in a sibling-like manner. Parlade insisted that he did not red-tag Soberano when he told her to avoid leftist groups, adding that he was giving brotherly advice. He said different media entities twisted and misquoted him and netizens did not read his entire statement, making it sound like he was red-tagging the actress. Parlade cited three members of the Gabriela Youth, namely Jo Lapira, Ren Manalo, and Camille Manangan, who were killed as armed combatants in encounters between the military and the members of the CPP, NPA, and DF. Parlada said, young women who are recruited by these groups may not be able to identify that they are crossing the line from being plain activists to becoming terrorists. He also assured that the advocacies of Sabarano are legitimate and that he understands her. A proposed coffee room at the west wing of the Ilocos Norte Capitol building was converted into a contact tracing operations center to boost the Provincial Health Task Force's contact tracing efforts. The center was officially inaugurated on Tuesday to process data of traced individuals. The operations center will operate 24-7 and will collect and consolidate the contact tracing data gathered on the field. With the help of personnel from the Bureau of Fire Protection, Philippine National Police and the assigned contact tracers of the province, including the Barangay Health Emergency Response Teams, the operations center will assist in processing data as well as provide real-time updates about the COVID-19 situation in the province. Meantime, Governor Matthew Joseph Manotok urged residents to continue observing minimum health protocols and help in the mitigation, control and treatment of infected patients. More than 1,500 senior citizens in Tarlac City were administered with flu vaccines on Tuesday for free to boost their fight against COVID-19. Mayor Christy Angeles believed that through the immunization program, the cases of COVID-19 in the city will decline, especially among the senior citizens. As of Tuesday, Tarlac Province logged 17 new recoveries from COVID-19, bringing the total number to 496. However, five new confirmed COVID-19 cases were reported, raising the total number of cases to 677. The number of recorded deaths remained at 29. Meanwhile, in Cebu City, the National Commission of Senior Citizens, or NCSC, said it will set up a satellite office in this capital city in order to bring government services closer to the elderly. Chairman Franklin Quijano visited Cebu City Mayor Edgardo Labella and Mandawe City Mayor Jonas Cortez to pitch in various reforms to be implemented under the National Commission of Senior Citizens Act. Quijano discussed the possibility of developing a database of senior citizens so that distribution of their benefits can be fast-tracked using the system. The NCSC chairman visited the Malacanang Sasugbu building, which is being eyed to house the commission's satellite office. The Department of Health in Caraga is eyeing a 95% immunization coverage for rubella measles for children 9 months to 59 months of age. The DOH launched the measles rubella supplemental immunization activity, which will end on November 25 for the campaign's Phase 1. In compliance with current health protocols, vaccination will be done in fixed posts wherein the health workers will no longer conduct a house-to-house -house immunization. The DOH said rubella is a contagious and deadly type of measles and vaccination will increase the immunity level of children against various diseases. Monday's launch of the MRSIA vaccination in barangays Pigdaulan and 
Dumalagan in Butuan City also saw the start of its HPV vaccination campaign for female children ages 9 to 14. The DOH said human papilloma vaccination prevents cervical cancer, which is considered one of the main causes of premature deaths among mothers. In sports, Zamboanga City bounced back from a stinging early exit in the previous leg to claim the championship in the fourth stage of the Chukstugo Pilipinas 3x3 President's Cup. Two nights after getting shockingly booted in the quarterfinals of Leg 3, Zamboanga City pushed back eventual Leg 3 ruler Butuan in the Leg 4 finals. Z the Zambongenos were on the verge of hitting another huge bump after back-to-back -back deuces from Chris De Chavez blew the team's lead. De Chavez, however, failed to check Santi Santillan, who took the opportunity to drain a free throw for the match point. Joshua Munzon finished with 11 points to lead Zamboanga City, while the Chavez totaled 12 markers for Butuan. The five-leg conference will culminate on the Grand Finals on Friday. Here's another look at today's biggest stories. The DOTR extends the implementation of mandatory cashless toll transactions. OFWs are not required to avail of private RT-PCR tests at the NAIA. Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade Jr. clarifies he is only warning Liza Soberano as if she was his younger sister. And Ilocos Norte turns its coffee room into a contact tracing hub. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or head onto the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day and stay safe, everyone.